So Natalie, can I please walk you on stage? Thank you. Please give a round of applause. Hello, everyone again. Hi, hello, and thank you for staying, us, uh, staying with us until this session. So hello again. I think I've introduced myself for the fourth time today. So um, thank you for joining me. I'm Natalie. I'm um, from the Amazon Global Selling Marketing Team. And welcome to our fireside chat where we have a conversation with Debbie and Ivan about why customer engagement matters and how Ivan and Debbie builds their community of loyal fans and satisfied customers. So I, yeah. So you know, before we just jump into today's topic, let's get to know our panelists a little bit better. So hey, Debbie, it's really interesting to know that. Um, <clears throat> Before you actually started your Amazon business, you were a reporter and editor. Could you share more about, you know, what is that, how has that been? What, what was that, you know, journey that you went through? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, before I started Am with Amazon, um, I spent a decade as a news reporter and that brought me to uh, New York City where I was a copy editor putting out breaking news and headlines and stories from around the world. Um, I really liked that. I really enjoyed it. It was something that I wanted to do is like a, from when I was a young kid. But when I did that and I decided that I wasn't going to stay in the US for very long, I had to come back to Singapore and then I found myself wondering, what am I going to do in my life? I didn't want to work for a corporate anymore. I wanted to be in control of my own time. So then I'm like, oh, maybe I should take some products and try to sell it and see if I can become a business person. That would be a very nice uh, ambition to have. Yeah, super interesting. I think most of you will agree. Like, wow, report from a reporter and editor to an e-commerce owner, entrepreneur. So, what are actually some skills of or life lessons that you know you took away from being a reporter and an editor that actually still stays with you today as an e-commerce owner? Uh, I think because um, selling people, telling people about the news and selling products are actually on the spectrum of subjective and uh, objective. They're actually at opposite ends. So it was a big challenge for me to switch. But one of the things I learned as an editor was to be very concise and very precise when I use my words. So transferring that onto my listings, my Amazon listings, and trying to explain the benefits of my product um, has been quite uh, helpful. Yeah, I think a lot of your, you know, your <clears throat> a lot of the tips and you know life lessons you took away as a reporter editor. Maybe that's why you have amazing product listings with <laughs> succinct product detail, you know, bullet points. Yeah, that's amazing. So, what about you, Ivan? Um, have you always wanted to be an entrepreneur growing up? I think growing up, I never really want to be entrepreneur, but I wanted to. I mean, I was, when I was young, I wanted to make more money. So I mean, I mean, sure everybody <laughs> here here agrees. also want to make more money, right? Because uh, my family wasn't very well off, so uh, money was hard to come by. So I wanted to make more, make more money. Uh, so that was uh, my intention. So I tried many, many different things. Uh, when I was young, I tried MLM. I tried like uh, a lot of funny, funny investments. I mean, most of them were scams. Then uh, I also got scammed a bit. <laughs> then I tried like buying and selling secondhand handphones. Like doing trading, like something like doing trading. And then like, uh, yeah, so I did many, many different things, but most of them failed. Like. So I mean, that was growing up. That was how, how I was. I like, always wanting to make more money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's very interesting. I think everybody shares the same inspiration, right? Um, always, you know, you need, you're talking about having more sales, doing better. And I think what's unique about you is that you have always been an entrepreneur. Like, you never had a corporate job. You know, you went straight out of um, university. Yeah, maybe you can share more about that. Yeah, so, being my character, I want to, always want to do more. So, when I was in university, I started to... Uh, uh, keep finding more ways to make more money and I stumbled upon internet marketing. So there was time, there was, there was when I started uh, how to build websites, how to uh, do uh, marketing, digital marketing stuff. So I, I did that uh, in my first year. I made zero dollars. Very sad to say. So I uh, tried for another year, I made probably a couple hundred dollars for, entire, for two, year, two whole years. So most of, most of people would have given up. But to me, it was uh, very interesting because uh, I felt the, the possibility that, that making money online was possible. So uh, I grew up try, keep trying on that and I keep uh, diving deeper and deeper and along the ways I 
also read a lot of you know those uh, internet marketing gurus. They talk about how much money they made. Most of them were scams. But I was, I think I was quite naive in the fact that I believe that it was possible. Like they, they tell me they were, they make I don't know how many million. They drive Lamborghini around, right? So as a young man, as a young young boy at the time, I was very naive. I believe it was possible. So I keep diving deeper and deeper and deeper, and then I chance upon uh, affiliate marketing. I did that for a good ten years. And then I, before I graduate, I, and I told myself before I graduate from university, I want to, I, don't, I didn't want to go for a job. Uh, and then all the, you know, university, I was from NTU, la, by the way. So they would have these like, resume writing classes, and I refused to attend any of those classes. So I never written a resume before because I was very determined that uh, when I graduate, I want to have a full time income that can support me and my family. That time was my mother, la, and then uh, there was, uh, there was, how it, it went. I think but over the years, I've changed a lot. Uh, I've, I went from being uh, someone who uh, wants to make money online to someone who wants to build something that's of value. And uh, I think there's a very big difference between making money online and building an online business. Because when you build an online business, you actually build assets. You build intrinsic value to, your, to whatever you're doing that, that is of value that you can one day sell it off. Rather than when, you, when you're making money online, you do affiliate, you're just trading time for money, you just have a very good skill set, but you can't sell it. Yeah, I think that's a very, very big difference in my mindset when I was in my 20s and now in my 30s that has changed over the years. Now also already, no energy. No, no, no. I think, you know, you can really like write a book about what you just shared. You know, it's a oh, really yeah. inspi inspiring story, yeah. you know, really took an unconventional path, you know, from trying different things. And I think the key thing here is you didn't give up and you believed in yourself, you know, through the failures, through the ups and downs. And in fact, both of you took a very unconventional path, you know. Um, and we all know, you know, here, like many of you are experiencing it, um, the the journey of an entrepreneur has many ups and downs. And I know, you know, Ivan, you shared a bit about it, you know, but maybe Debbie, you also, you also can share, you know, what are some of the products or businesses that you launched before you actually found success? You know, Ivan touched a bit about it. You know, maybe both of you can share about this. For me, I didn't actually go out and look for the kind of product that I wanted to sell. Um, I had an unfair advantage where I had access to a manufacturer uh, of a certain kind of products that I'm selling today. And I just went ahead and, and took that product and then put it online and tried to sell it. Um, along the way, because the manufacturer was good, I decided that I wanted to find a cheaper or alternative source. So I took the know-how that I, that I garnered in uh, Vietnam making this um, product. I took it to China and I told the factory, this, can, you improve, can you improve on this product? And then um, I, it doesn't even have to be 100%. It can be 90 or 80% of the Vietnamese version. But I want you to make it and then maybe I can sell it cheaper, put it on Amazon and then I can sell more volume. Um, so by way of diversifying, because you don't want to just have one supplier um, supplying you forever. So that was a really bad idea because I learned the hard way that Amazon only um, that Amazon customers are very discerning and they care about quality. So you can't just give them something that's eighty percent and expect them to swallow it. So I spent ten months um, experimenting with this new supplier and accepting a lower quality product. And the moment I listed it. The reviews that started to come in were really bad. I had to abandon the listing right away. I had all this stock that I had to liquidate and just kind of write off the investment of time and money for that 10 months and then go back to my good manufacturer and say, okay, I pay you more. Um, and let's, let's give the customers good quality products. So that was a failure that I've learned from. I think the most important thing is you really can't, you know, save on quality. So yeah, customers will always know like high quality products. Definitely that's something that you need to keep, you know, improving your products. Anything from Ivan on this topic? You talk about businesses, you're talking about Amazon business or you're talking about any other business that I've done? I think you shared a bit about like your MLM, the scam businesses. Yeah. Maybe products so I, on I, Amazon I, or Amazon <laughs> businesses? Um... Businesses that we launched before we found success. I think for me, because my background is in uh, digital marketing, 
So Facebook ads, Google running Google and all the matrices on PPC wasn't new to new to me. And uh, and we didn't start off like wanting to do like or we from the beginning we wanted to be a big baby brand, that kind of thing, you know. So it was kind of like uh, uh by the way thing was my wife that time me and my wife were having our first kid. So we were very interested in uh, baby products. We were researching a lot on baby products to find the right quality, uh, good products for our baby. Like, because everyone loves their baby. So then we found it like there was a gap between uh, between what was on the market and uh, what we what we were doing. Because we were very busy running our own business. We were running an events business in Southeast Asia at the time. Like, and then we were having to spend time researching about all the different brands, about different particular products. And then they were it was taking a lot of time. So we wanted to uh, bridge this gap to really create a brand that encompasses safety, quality, and uh, and be the everything baby store. You know, like once you trust this brand, there's like so many different kind of products you can buy for our brand. So I think that was uh, when we started off. This was uh, our main goal to uh, of how we built the brand. Yep, yep. I think interesting, you know, that you might not always find success in your very first product or even your very first business. So test and try and, you know, even a life stage like what Ivan shared, you know, Jane was having a baby, you realise there are some product gaps and then that's where you develop like Kia Babies um, <clears throat> further. So now moving on to our main topic for this session, you know, when we say customer engagement, we actually refer to any kind of communication that helps you connect with your customers and go one step beyond transactional relationships. So through customer engagement, you can communicate your unique story and values, differentiate your brand and establish a real connection with your target audience in the US. So customers become loyal when they receive outstanding service from a brand they share the same values with. So customer engagement when done right allows you to increase your brand salience, improve customer loyalty, increase repeat purchase rates and lower customer acquisition costs. But it's, it's not always easy to deliver the same level of customer service in an online store where in the physical store, you can engage with your customers face-to-face, -face, answer all their questions about the product. So this makes reviews and the post-purchase experience very, very important online. And especially today with reviews, online reviews and social media, so customer service can really make or break your brand's reputation. So I'm very curious, you know, first question to the both of you, um, what is the most memorable review that you have come across for your products? Let me start first. Uh, I think when you're a new seller and you start to get good reviews, you're very excited. Once you cross that hump, then you start to um, take good reviews as kind of like an everyday thing and you start to remember the ones that are not so good. Those are the ones that really stick with you, especially if they're particularly uh, yeah, not nice. So for me, the one that's most memorable, I mean, besides the ones that people tell you, oh, you know, your product changed my, my life, and that's really nice. But there was this one that was something I didn't, um, they didn't post on my listing. It was a review that I solicited. What happened was some customers will make repeat purchases, and a small number of them will ask for refunds for most of those purchases. So this customer in particular ordered, say, 11 times over maybe six months and re got a refund, asked for a refund and returned the product for nine times. And I'm thinking this must be some kind of scam. If you don't like my product, don't buy it. Like, why do you keep ordering from me if something, you know, you really don't like it? Are you trying to just, like, waste my money because it costs me money when you return? So I sent a really nice um, polite email saying, um, if there's something I can help you with to address your concerns, please let me know. Um, but if you are trying to be funny, um, please stop. So I was trying to be, to, to couch it in a nice manner. The lady actually came, so there are some people who do that and then they don't respond when you reach out to them and then that's fine, um, they'll stop doing it. They know that you're watching. But this lady actually came back and said, I actually have very, very high expectations for my products and I like your products. But if there's a tiny scratch, a bit of blemish, a bit of hair or fur or some kind of um, machine oil on it, um, I don't want it. So I like it, 
but it has to be perfect. And so that kind of review, um, there's nothing I can do about customers like this if you're wondering what can you do. Nothing. But I can take that feedback and go back to my factory and say, look, you have to improve your processes. The quality has to be better so that we avoid situations like this. Yeah, that was very memorable for me. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, a customer who really wants like a perfect product, but she loves your products. That's why she's purchasing them again. Yeah, but interesting. Definitely interesting. Uh, so for me, I think memorable. There's two two sides to it, like The good one and the bad one, So like you always remember the bad, the worst review they've gotten, and you also will remember the best review they've gotten. So for me, like uh, because for us as a as a seller, as a brand owner, we develop the product ourselves. You always think that your product is the best, right? So you, you always think that, oh, you have done everything you can to make this product the best product you can. So when you, when you start to sell it, that's when you get to start to get real market feedback. And of course, when the review is good, of course, you feel happy. Lah. But when the, especially for a new seller, when the, when the first bad review comes in, you will say, oh my God, this one is competitor attack. From the you will think, oh, got bad review means competitor buy our product and then anyhow want to, want to, want to say bad things about us. So... <laughs> So I think uh, for us, when we had our first, uh, our first product four years, five years ago, I think we also went through the same thing. Like, right? like when we had bad product, then you said, oh, confirm this one is a competitor sabotaging us, competitor uh, do bad review, attack on us, and that kind of shit. Then we had to write a lot, a lot of email cases to the support them. This is a fake review, this is a fake review, this is a bogus uh, customer buying our product and shit, and that, kind of, that kind of thing. So ask them to please take down. But of course, Amazon won't take down like, for sure. So I think this was something memorable for us. And I think it happened to all of you if you start to selling your first product, it happened. But over the years, we have refined uh, how we still write reviews. We took it at real market feedback to really see uh, where we can, where are the flaws in our product and where we can use that, all this feedback to further improve and enhance the quality and, and uh, the, the product that we, that we bring to our customers. I think that's the most memorable bad part. La. So we, we have time, right? Yeah, yeah, we okay, do have so a bit more time. We have time, right, guys? You want to hear the good reviews? <laughs> okay, so for the memorable good things, of course, uh, for Care Babies, uh, we are a baby maternity brand. So I think in general, we are, uh, we are in a business whereby we, we, we have more happy customers than unhappy customers. And our tagline for Care Babies is to create wonderful moments together. We inspire parents that uh, it's up to the parents to be able to, uh, to inspire them to create strong parent-child parent bonding. So you want to have a very good and a relationship with, with your child, it's up to you. So through our brand messages and our tagline and, and the things that we communicate in our emails, our newsletter to them, we really uh, hope that our brand logo can be an inspiration to them that every time they use our product, they are reminded that it's up to them, it's up to us to create that wonderful moments with our parent, with our, with our baby. So uh, I think one of the most memorable reviews is that when you, see peop- when you see reviews talking about that, people are talking to, people are writing the reviews that all oh, your product really has helped us to forge better family relationship with me and my child, or me, and my, me and my husband, me and my family. So we spend quality time together because when you use your product, we're reminded of the messages that you tell us. I think this is uh, something that we feel very touched and we feel that uh, we are doing the right thing. Like we're adding real value to to the community or to our customers, uh, not just in the product sense, but in the whole overall family environment that, that has become better because of our products. Yeah. That's so amazing to hear because, you know, <clears throat> happy customers are more likely to recommend their products, um, your products to their friends and family, and you really can't do better than word of mouth. No matter how many promotional claims we make, we can't beat a personal re- recommendation from friends and family. You know, but like what... Uh, Ivan and Debbie said, so even if you did your best, you know, negative reviews can still happen for many reasons. You know, sometimes it's differences in product expectations, um, customers misreading the product listings and purchasing the wrong size, so on and so forth. Yep, so um, with that being said, you know, maybe you can share what are some of the common feedback for, you know, some of your lowest rated products and how do you respond to this negative customer feedback? I have a product, so the, the bulk of my products are um, 
quite similar. Um, and so over time, I've learned how to list them properly and communicate the benefits. But I have a new product that um, needs a lot of uh, education. So I need to be very clear to explain to you how to use it and how to get it right. And if you're, and if you're not careful, the result will turn out not so pretty. Um, it's a beauty product. So for me, I've learned to take the feedback and translate them to be, uh, being more conscious about people's pain points and then reflecting that on the listing. Um, other than that, I don't really have any um, other very specific examples of yeah how how um, of of negative feedback. I think a lot of the feedback sometimes we get is actually not really uh, that I get is not really product specific. Sometimes it's fulfillment. Sometimes it's misfulfillment. It's uh, shipping delays. Um, that kind of thing. Interesting, um, Ivan. I think for us, uh, I think customer trust is very important and uh, we, we always tell our customers that we stand by every single product that we produce. In fact, uh, it be it the quality of it, delivery of it, anything. So every of our product comes with uh, 365 days, uh, no question asked, full refund. So, uh, so it's important for them to feel safe that when they buy our product that they know that if anything goes wrong or they don't like our product for any reason, they can always come to us and we will give them a full refund or a full replacement. Even after like, 365 days, or 364 days, if they come to us and say, hey, I don't like your product, I want a refund. And then we will honor our word and then we will refund them. So this makes them feel uh, that they are buying from a, from a, they are buying a brand that is standing behind their product. Like, I think that's very, very important. Especially in today's world, especially in baby products, whereby safety, quality is uh, of paramount importance. And then like every day you're building on that trust, uh, build on that confidence level of your customers, then, uh, your, then you'll grow. La. Yeah. I think it's super important, you know, to build your customer trust and especially like products like baby, safety, you know, you really don't want to risk anything. Parents need to feel assured and they're willing to pay a premium for their, ba yeah. their baby's safety. Yeah, so customer reviews are indeed important data points for you to identify product gaps and make, product, uh, make improvements to your existing products. So sometimes these reviews may even identify areas for you to optimize on, like what Debbie mentioned. For example, improving your instruction manual in response to usability complaints or adding lifestyle images to your product listing so that customers can get uh, an idea of the actual size of your product even if you included the dimensions in your bullet points. Because sometimes, you know, they might not look at every single bullet point you included. But customer, um, however, nowadays, customer participation is no longer referring to reviews online or filling up feedback forms. This is just one element of a more holistic process. So customers increasingly demand to feel personally involved in the brands that they buy from. So Ivan, I really love that you created the Kia community. So could you share more with our audience about what the Kia community is and what happens in the Kia community? Yeah, uh, I think for us, we need to understand that behind every sale of our product is a human being that is buying our product, that is using our product. So we, we wanted to humanize uh, that process, the whole process. So having that, especially for new moms or like mothers who are, where they are undergoing body changes and they are going through a new phase of their life, their life is going to, you know, like going to... It's, so it's, it's always the unknown that they are very uncertain about. They are worried. So we have this support group whereby it's a care community whereby they can join and then they, usually they are, they are customers so they can join and then the people who are new parents, their mothers, their whatever, they will come in and then they can discuss, they can uh, rant, and they can share their emotional outpour, you know, like, very interesting, we have like many, many different people talking about different things, but usually like one of the common topics is they rant about their husbands. <laughs> 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 you know, the husband don't do this, don't do that, you know, like, oh, very irritating, and things like that. So they rant about this, and then like, because when you talk to your husband, kind of thing, they don't understand, you know. But when you talk to a fellow parent who's, who's going through the same thing as you, that's where they find emotional support, that's where they find mental support. And that's where we want to, they know that we, are, we want to be there for them a lot throughout the whole 
parenthood journey whereby once you become our customers, we will be we are here to support you. We are here to to have this community to support each other. And uh, like new parents, they are very I think they are they are more emotional, like, more emotional. So emotional support will bring a long way, lor, for them to also help, also in a way help us to them to remember our brand. Yeah, yeah, I think in fact it's also a good forum for you to get like insight about like the biggest pain points on your customers and how to improve your products. You know. And, I signed uh, up today. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are we expecting? No, I'm kidding. So <laughs> yeah, so that's really valuable for both young and seasoned parents. You know, I think it's super helpful. Um, the Kia community is definitely helping many parents to find support and motivation through the ups and downs of their parenthood journeys. And I love how the Kia community connects parents with one another and leverages on the power of peer-to-peer -peer learning, which is why all of you guys are here together. You know, we want you to know as many sellers as possible, support one another in this journey as well. And um, yeah, so how did you grow the Kia community to the current size of 21.6k members that you have now? Uh, how do we grow the community? So basically, when uh, they buy our product, uh, there will be instructions on the product that they can register their warrant. They are register for our VIP member, and then from there we will invite them to join our community, whereby they we can we can support each other, lah. So uh, and then from there we also invite get them to invite their friends who are, who are going through the same journey, the new parenthood journey, to also join the community to uh, support each other and to talk about. Uh, the things that they always want to hear and or things like that, lor. So I've been we've been doing this for the last three, four years, four years really. So it's slowly adding up. We don't spend a we don't spend a single cent on growing this community, wow. or so we don't do any paid advertising to grow this community. So it's all organic, and uh, it's all through word of mouth, or it's through customers who uh, bought our products, and then from there they they come into our community, lor. I think that's really amazing because you know this is so relevant parenthood is a long journey you know just like entrepreneurship it's a new stage of life you know something that you really you know like it grows with you it's a long-term journey so i've also been seeing you post a lot recently on your socials about your marketing team's ar 3d uh, filter effects of your <laughs> little kia mascot <laughs> and it's really really cute um, could you share more about how kia babies has been interacting with your followers on the different social media channels you own yeah, we've been doing a lot of uh, playing with a lot of different things like AR filter, Instagram. So you go to like you go to WhatsApp now, you go to the GIF, you know the GIF that you can select, you can type here, babies. You can see all the different stickers that we have created for our customers, for people to use. Uh, we have done like uh, 3D, like you know, like we have our mascot whereby you can you can lift it up using uh, your phone. <laughs> Yeah, it's very funny. So uh, I think what we want ultimately what we are trying to do is uh, we are not. We are not just, uh, we don't just sell baby products. In fact, we, are, we want to build, we want to create a lifestyle among our customers that to, 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 sur to surround them, like, like a, to create engagement that wherever they go, wherever they do in their day-to-day -day life, they are always reminded that Kia Baby is just around. So they go to Instagram, they'll see us. They go to TikTok, they'll see us. They go to Facebook, they'll also see us. They go to YouTube, they'll see us. They go to their email, they'll see us. They go to Amazon, they'll see us. So it's like, we want to... <laughs> okay. We really want to like uh, create this, uh, you know, like uh, in a in they call it Wuzi San, whereby we 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 surround them every day. That they are always reminded that we are just beside them, yeah, things like that. So I think this will uh, get them to always always have us on their mind. So if they need baby thing or first thing they remember. Eh? I recently saw some cute stickers uh, on Kill babies. Yeah, and interestingly, the, the, the GIF that we did, it went viral. So we actually, like in two weeks, we got like uh, 14 million people using the GIF, the stickers and WhatsApp. You can go and, go and check it out. We have cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will. Yeah, so uh, yeah, these are things that we have done. Now. Of, course, of course, like these are technology things, but in terms of social media influencers, we are also doing a lot. The one later, is it? No, you can share now. Okay, yeah. share now. <laughs> So social media influencers, uh, every month we have like, we create like uh, teams and contests for our customers to, to do something with our product. So like, for example, last month we did, we did like a TikTok contest 
whereby we send an email and send to, uh, to our customers to say that you can, if you can do a very nice video, TikTok video with our products, any, any kind of videos, and then you can stand a chance to win $1,000 uh, in, in prizes. So uh, that contest went, went very well. Uh, we got about 35 different vid uh, videos of our customers doing TikTok. TikTok is very huge in the US, uh, by the way. Very cute with our products. And then we got about 1.5 million views, TikTok views, and uh, things like that. And then this month, we are doing Halloween. So you got to do something Halloween related with our products, and then you can win prizes. Lah. So it's that kind of constant engagement that we are always constantly doing that really keeps us at the top of their, of the, of, of their minds. Lah. Yeah, so I think these are the little, little things that people may find it like, oh, you sound like very costly, like very uh, no ROI kind of thing. But we see this as a long-term game. Uh. Like brand building is really not just in the next one or two years what you're going to do, but in the next 10 years, where will, where will you want your brand to be? How you want people to perceive your brand or where you want to take the brand to? So we are looking at a 5, 10 year, even 20 year horizon in terms of uh, how we are going to build our brand. And then all these things to me are the foundational steps is costly, I have no, no doubt we have, we, have, uh, we, have, we have been paying people, it's, it's not making money, but we see it as a long term, it's a long term game. Yeah, I think, I mean, like, it's really, like, really engaging with your customers at every single step. And I, I can totally imagine, like, TikTok videos with babies wearing, like, Halloween costumes and then, you know, the, your baby products, it's super cute. You can go to yeah. TikTok, just go and uh, search of our brand. In TikTok, you can see a lot of these Halloween funny, funny babies. videos. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, thanks Ivan for sharing, so cute. Um, what about you, Debbie? Um, how have you been growing and interacting with customers on your different social channels that you own? Yeah, I think it's really interesting that you have the two of us here because I think we're on opposite spectrums of that and I'm extremely inspired by what you said and this um, concept of being top of mind, being everywhere and being very visible is something which I learned in marketing school but I didn't implement it in my business because I didn't enjoy it. So I prefer the operations and logistics side of my business. When it comes to marketing and social media, I have been putting it off. I'm very embarrassed. But like he said, it costs money to do marketing, right? And you don't see the ROI right away. So you kind of prioritize um, pushing sales uh, through Amazon first. Um, but now that I've been selling for a few years, I have um, decided to hire somebody. Um, I found them on a freelancer website so, and I, I interviewed a number and I picked a uh, a new social media manager, somebody who can be the social face uh, of my brand or like represent my brand um, socially and kind of target, um, commun uh, engage with customers in a way that I haven't been able to do so just through Amazon. Um, so yeah, I think if, the, if there are people in this room that uh, are not as social media savvy like me, then, then you have options um, on how you want to uh, engage with your customers. And one thing about uh, when you sell on Amazon, the kind of engagement that you have customers is very limited. You're only allowed to use the messaging, um, messaging system within Amazon to talk to your customers. You can reach out to them, but also when they reach out to you, it's typically just to um, ask, where's my package? Why is there something wrong with my product? And it's always um, reactive and um, I'm, you're always trying to fix a problem or put out a fire. Um, with talking to customers on social media, and I've been doing that on uh, Instagram mainly, um, it's a lot more personal and the kind of communication is a lot more um, real, a lot more authentic. Um, it's a completely different type of communication. So with my new social media manager, um, we're tr now trying to work more on, um, create more content for Instagram um, that will interest people. Uh, and I've also just last week put my first videos on TikTok. <laughs> so, super behind compared to Ivan, but um, it's a very interesting journey and uh, I'm finding it uh, like a 
huge kind of learning uh, experience. Yeah, I think it's really amazing. You know, at different, you know, I guess sellers are at different stages. Um, you know, all together for us here, some of you might be new to Amazon. You know, haven't. You know, the next step is also creating your your Instagram accounts, your different ways to engage with sellers. Of course, customer reviews are important. Um, the customer service post purchase is also important, and also building up your brand presence on the different channels. So, um, it's been a very lovely conversation, um, both Ivan and Debbie. I, you know, really love talking to sellers like you, having such a conversation. Um, in the interest of time, maybe we'll just move a little bit um, to Q&A. So uh, I do see a couple of questions coming in. Um, but, you know, before we you jump right into Q&A, I just want to say, like, thank you for this conversation. I think we learned a lot. And then even, you know, as panelists, we're inspired by both of your sharings. Uh, both of you and of course uh, we are so glad to have like so many people tuning in to today's session i think we have like over 2500 attendees maybe even more of that you know both online and offline and yeah it's really encouraging to hear how both of you are engaging and interacting with your customers to provide value added service beyond just transactional relationships so maybe we can quickly jump into one or two questions in the q and a so, um, okay, maybe let me just pick the most popular question here. Uh, I think there's one question here that says, do you do paid marketing to build your customer base or customer loyalty? Is it done organically? And how can we build up this base organically? I think that's like quite similar to what you shared about the care community. So like paid advertising, we don't really do like like directly to to do brand building, but we engage. We do pay like uh, influencers to to do videos for us to post on their influ uh, on their socials. We also engage like uh, public relations agencies in the U.S. to help us to push our products to the news and media and bloggers uh, web uh, website uh, and all these So I think I think all these are I I don't know if you consider them as paid marketing, but all the all the traffic that we have, like like we have uh, for our all these medias, they're all free. Uh. So uh, I think you need do need to invest a little bit of money to to get all these things uh, rolling. And uh, but once it comes in, then the the behind part that comes in, the traffic that comes in is free. Uh. So and also like um, uh, paid marketing. Yeah, we also like we also apply for like uh, certain baby awards in the US. So I think like baby awards is also uh, something import uh, something that is very important for a brand that like, to be recognized to be uh, being assured of quality. So I mean for some of the awards we do have to pay to participate. But then once you get the award, then you you know you get the recognition, you get the whatever. So uh, and that's organic like I feel. So I I think. It and organize it. Something yeah, like. I think like what you mentioned also. Anyway, like on the care community where you grow to even like they've uh, so many different followers over the years, most of that was organic. And of course, that builds brand loyalty over time. So I think we we are out of time and we really appreciate all of your attention and, you know, for staying all the way to this session. Thank you so much. for And that's it for today's, uh, for this panel. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.